All right, what's up guys? So earlier on, I asked you guys if you wanted to see a C-clamp video and if that would benefit you guys in any way. So I hiked on out here in this fresh snow we got here in Idaho. And I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate the C-clamp video for you guys. The main reason that I did this video was because there's a lot of controversy going on over the C-clamp deal. And I kind of got in some heated discussions with some people um, based upon what they preferred when they're shooting and the C-clamp version that I like to do. And so I just wanted to make this video just to show the C-clamp method if anyone out there hasn't seen it yet. And so if you don't know what the C-clamp method is, is it's your offhand gripping the front of the gun here. And the reason they call it C-clamp is because you make a C-shape with your hand like this when you grip the gun. So I'm gonna grab it like a C with my thumb on top and then gripping around the hand guard here. And then I have the foregrip on my gun. Some don't, some do. But that just kind of helps pull the gun back into you. So the C-clamp is basically just this right here, as you can see. All right. And so the main idea for the C-clamp is to optimize recoil management and also to optimize the control of your weapon. All right, because when you shoot a gun, no matter what gun you're shooting, whether it's a big hunting rifle, like a 300 Win Mag, or just a 22, you're gonna have two types of movements when you shoot. You're gonna have your rearward back movement, and then you're also going to have, got some snow in the barrel there, and then you're gonna have up movement with the muzzle. So the gun's gonna go like this, with any gun you shoot. Now, I mean, with something like a 22, obviously you're gonna have significant less amount of back and up movement, but you're still gonna have it, all right? And when we're talking about like a hunting rifle, we're gonna see some major movement because of the power. Now, an AR-15, as you guys know, kinda sits on the lower spectrum of recoil. So you don't get a whole lot of back movement or up because you know you have the uh, BCG mechanism here and you also have a muzzle brake which combats the recoil rearward and upward all right but even with that you still get some movement so in order to combat the back obviously with the C clamp here I'm gonna I'm gonna secure it into my shoulder now with a lot of guys, and even with some of your bigger guys, they will tell you to really drive it, like drive it back hard into your shoulder to secure it. And with me, that's not something that I necessarily agree with because, like I said, there's two movements that we're trying to combat, up and back. Now, if I'm driving the gun too far back, I'm only assisting that backward movement, right? Anytime you're really forcing something, you're going to stiffen up your entire body. And when you stiffen up your entire body, the recoil is going to be 10 times worse. Because when you shoot and you're stiff, it's going to move your entire body, right? Whereas if you're a little bit loose with it, you'll see that you have some mitigation there. So my thought with this is that instead of like really aggressively driving it into my shoulder, more so just enough to secure it here making sure there's no space and just keeping it kind of tight but not really driving it back hard and to combat that back uh, recoil mainly i'm just using my upper body and my base to be firm for the gun to sit in all right and then obviously number one is having the ability to have my thumb on top of the barrel here because this is where all the recoil is going to come from when we're talking about upward movement. So the further I get up on there to help assist driving that barrel down, I can maintain the barrel a little bit better. All right, versus your traditional 
rifle grip here. I don't have anything on top. And I'd really have to squeeze it hard to compensate for that. But like I said, the harder you force something, the stiff your body gets, the worse the recoil is gonna be. So by having it up and having the thumb on top, while I shoot, I can keep that thing down, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so by having my thumb on top, it feels really easy to just be able to drive those shots into the same spot without having too much movement up. All right, so in my eyes, having the ability to have something on top is superior. Another major advantage with the C-clamp, now this isn't something that I came up with. I actually learned this from Mike Glover and it's the idea of having your thumb here as kind of a pointer, all right? So if I see a target, I can immediately drive my thumb into the target and it's right there, all right? Whereas here, I can drive it, but it's not as accurate and pinpoint as it would be as if I'm focusing on my thumb, right? Because even without a gun, and I'm looking, say there's two targets here, boom, I can find both targets extremely fast by putting my thumb on it, right? And so when my thumb's here on the gun, I can find that target super easy. So for example, I'll start here from uh, kind of a low ready position, safety on, and I'm just gonna drive, focusing mainly on my thumb, I'm gonna drive into my target and I'm gonna engage, all right? So low ready, stand by. And it's right there, right where I wanna hit it. And that's basically the gist of the C-clamp. And really, you can sum this up into three things. Like I said, combating, the rearward movement, having the ability to drive the barrel down, and also making it easier for you to get the gun on target much quicker and way more optimal than, per se, the forward grip or the traditional rifle hold, all right?